So I wanted to share something that came out of a conversation I had with an executive over the past weekends, and it, it was I think it was a Saturday night, 9.30 or so, we were kind of talking through, and, and we just got to one fundamental principle that I think just people just need to understand, and I just want to reiterate here. It's, it's, it's written about you know, in a lot of areas, so you can certainly Google and find other things on that. So I just want to try to simplify it. And in this case, we're contrasting two different models, right? The kind of the the most widely known or historical model that you would hire a financial advisor that may be at Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, versus finding an advisor that may own and operate their own business as, as an entrepreneur, uh, which industry-wise, that, that's called an RIA, or Registered Investment Advisor. And so comparing those two things, well, what do we need to know um, and what are their motivations behind any kind of financial advice that an advisor would be giving or providing in either one of those constructs and, and the motivation behind the, that advice. And so within a large financial institution, right, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, you have to understand there's a big part of the compensation for an advisor is variable compensation. And no different than you know an executive that's working within any industry you know, that variable compensation is typically based on certain metrics that the overall entity finds important. Right? They typically these are public companies. They have shareholders. They have board of directors. They have to report earnings. They have to do all these things. And so the wealth management business unit is one of you know, many business segments that they have under this larger umbrella. And so as they want to potentially start to dictate behavior. They're going to build those metrics into the variable compensation model. And so sometimes it's hard as a financial advisor operating in that model, also a client working with an advisor in that model, to, to understand some of the recommendations that are coming from there and understanding the motivation behind those recommendations. It's not always the case, and the financial advisors generally try to do a really good job of being as transparent as they can as their compensation model changes, you know, so frequently. But it's just sometimes it's hard, right, as a client is particularly executives that are really busy or entrepreneurs that are really busy, they don't want to constantly have to ask questions or have their advisor explain to them, you know, what their compensation is for giving a certain, you know, piece of advice. Whereas if you're working with an independently owned RIA, which has been, uh, you know, very kind of popularized over the last 10 to 20 years, it's gained a ton of momentum. It's been around longer than that, but it's really gained a ton of momentum. And part of the reason why is because it's it it's really much more simpler structure for a client and an advisor to operate from and to understand. It really simplifies the, I guess what you'd call transparency, right? That's what everyone kind of talks about in the industry is using that term, which ultimately is defined, I think, by I know what I'm paying and I know what value I'm receiving for that. And so at an RIA, the only revenue that they receive is what you're paying them as the client. And so they're taking those dollars, right, which you're paying them, and they're articulating or should be articulating exactly what you receive for that fee. And then ultimately it's on them as a business owner, right, to understand how to reinvest those dollars to make sure that you continue to receive that kind of value. Right. So whether they're going to reinvest that in a, in a new technology that may, you know, benefit you to which simplifies, you know, your reporting of all your restricted stock or uh, deferred compensation or whatever the case may be, or maybe they want to add additional staff that may have certain skill sets that'd be really beneficial to the types of clients that they serve. All of those things they have full control of. They're not competing with other business segments. Right? It's 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 one business. It's set up exclusively to give financial advice uh, to your clients, and so it ends up being what some consider the purest form of wealth management or financial advice.